Hey guys, welcome to The Sounding Mind, the loud inside voice that speaks the truth and nothing but the truth to power. This is the channel that focuses on exposing the hypocrisy of the left agenda. Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump are still at odds. Now, obviously, you guys have probably already seen it if you use social media at all. I guess there's a fight going on right now between Ron DeSantis fans and Trump supporters. I believe that the popular response on both sides of this argument is somewhat exaggerated. But that doesn't mean that I don't have concerns about Ron DeSantis's reaction in particular. I wish to discuss this circumstance. We've spoken about this a lot, so I want to add my two cents and let you know what I think. Now let's carry that out. Let's get started. We have some things to do. Roll the tape then. All right, everyone. Here is the contentious video from the Florida Standard that shows the two rival Republican Party sections fighting it out on Twitter and other social media sites. Uh, we wanted to know what your thoughts are on the rumored Trump indictment and if you have any role in it, um, if charges are brought on him, will you have any role in extradition to New York? Thank so you. I've seen rumors swirl. I have not seen any facts uh, yet, and so I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know this. The, the Manhattan district attorney is a Soros-funded prosecutor. And so he, like other Soros-funded prosecutors, they weaponize their office to impose a political agenda on society at the expense of the rule of law and public safety. He has downgraded over 50 percent of the felonies to misdemeanors. He says he doesn't want to even have jail time for the vast, vast majority of crimes. And what we've seen in Manhattan is we've seen the, sky, the, the crime rate go up and we've seen citizens become less safe. And so you're talking about this situation with, and look, I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star to, to secure silence over some type of alleged affair. I just, I can't speak to that. But what I can speak to is that if you have a prosecutor who is ignoring crimes happening every single day in his jurisdiction, and he chooses to go back many, many years ago uh, to try to use something about po porn star hush money payments, you know, that's an example of pursuing a political agenda and weaponizing the office. And um, I think that that's fundamentally wrong. There are thus a few problems with this situation. The word of the indictment, or purported indictment, dropped roughly two or three days late. The main reason why DeSantis is talking about the matter is because the media is forcing it on him. It almost seems as though he didn't want to talk about it at all. Since he's sort of in the middle of everything, many people find it to be problematic. Florida is where Donald Trump currently resides most of the time. Hence, he will need to be extradited if he is accused in New York. In a manner, Ron DeSantis is involved in the whole problem and has been remarkably mute about this blatant misuse of authority and use of the legal system as a weapon to pursue the party leader. On that topic, I wholeheartedly concur. I believe that Ron DeSantis's delayed and currently forced answer to the matter should be strongly denounced. But to be completely honest, that isn't what most people are referring to. A lot of individuals are considering the drama. Ron DeSantis said this specific part. You're talking about this situation with, and look, I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star to, to secure silence over some type of alleged affair. I just, I can't speak to that. On Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis makes fun. Some claim it was a bit of a cheap shot, and Trump backers are furious about it. The most of the controversy and back and forth on this Ron DeSantis video is on that slight jab he made at Trump. And that's where, in all honesty, you lose me because of this tribalism and oversensitivity, whenever President Trump or your politician is criticized, people completely freak out. Really, I'm not into it. You might come off as a little hypocritical, in my opinion, if you suddenly start clutching your pearls and wringing your hands over Ron DeSantis's criticism of President Trump. Let's be totally honest here. I mean, Trump and Ron DeSantis conflict. Trump commenced it. For the past six months, Trump has attacked Ron DeSantis. I think it works both ways. It's fair game. Therefore, I'm not lamenting it. Indeed, Donald Trump answered as well. And it's as amusing as you might anticipate. Ron DeSanctimonious will probably find out about false accusations 
and fake stories sometime in the future as he gets older, wiser, and better known. When he's unfairly and illegally attacked by a woman, even classmates that are, quote, underage or possibly a man, I'm sure he will want to fight these misfits just like I do. I don't think these Trump attacks are productive. While I preferred Trump over Clinton and Biden, I don't like the constant drama. He has to stop attacking everyone, cut out the victim speech, and start talking about solutions. Truth is that Trump wouldn't have to defend himself with regards to Stormy if he had exercised a little bit of self-control. You can't behave in this manner and then complain that people are criticizing your behavior, so it's obvious that Donald Trump is returning fire, but whatever. That is permissible. That is political. Trump and DeSantis are no longer friends. It just so happens that they are political adversaries. I don't find the small jab he made offensive, but I do have a problem. And what I really want to focus on, and where I think Ron DeSantis should be condemned, is his feeble response in prioritizing petty political theater over acting honorably by vehemently supporting Donald Trump and denouncing these dishonest Democrat clowns. You know, a lot of people are stepping up to defend Ron DeSantis, saying that he did a fantastic job bringing up the Soros DA and characterizing it as what we all view as essentially a political witch hunt. But to be completely honest, I thought it was pretty weak. Right now, there ought to be fury, and I want to concentrate on the term unity in particular. You know, times like these really bring to light the main flaws of the contemporary Republican Party. There is a great deal of timidity, and it is completely fragmented. I understand. The nasty orange dude doesn't appeal to you. Yet, you should be furious regardless of how you feel about the 45th president of the United States. You ought to be indignant. The time is right for cooperation. Instead, all we hear is silence or halting, ambiguous answers. And right there is where I'm having a problem. And Donald Trump was correct to point out in his social media response that Ron DeSantis will likely learn about unfounded charges and exaggerated rumors at some point. It's the point I always make, you know. It seems as though these Democrat attempts at character assassination, these false reports, false allegations, and accusations are merely special, desperate methods being used against President Trump especially, and everyone else will be protected. Instead, character assassination and total destruction of your political rivals are the new Democratic modus operandi. And if GOP figures, including Donald Trump's fiercest opponents and critics, are unable to recognize it, well, it's going to be a big problem going forward because Donald Trump won't be the last one. These strategies will still be used by Democrats. And if the GOP political establishment doesn't come together quickly and begin pushing back as Democrats use these mudslinging tactics then things are going to get really bad going forward. And it's especially revolting considering that the majority of these people's careers were founded on Trump endorsements. Let's add some context. Let's really be as fair as possible. Here's a Ron DeSantis ad from the 2018 election. Everyone knows my husband Ron DeSantis is endorsed by President Trump, but he's also an amazing dad. Ron loves playing with the kids. Build the wall. He reads stories. Then Mr. Trump said, you're fired. I love that part. He's teaching Madison to talk. Make America great again. People say Ron's all Trump, but he is so much more. Big league. So good. I just thought you should know. Ron DeSantis for governor. And to be honest with you, Ron reminds me a lot of Mitt Romney. So I don't think you're going to be doing so well here, but we're going to find out. But those are the facts. But I'm proud to say... I'm not a big fan of Mitt Romney, lost his election. And, yeah, Ron DeSantis is undoubtedly a fantastic politician, so I'm not trying to completely condemn him. He seems like a really nice guy, and I still think he's the greatest choice for the party's future. Nevertheless, I simply keep noticing the same trend. You know, if corporate Democrats and leftist socialists can eventually come together and even go so far as to support a senior citizen with dementia like Joe Biden, then why couldn't the GOP? Man versus machine, facing the worst political persecution in American history, and such a magnificent option as Donald Trump. It is sad that the GOP cannot support him and unite behind him at such a crucial time. Furthermore, it could be a fatal flaw. 
DeSantis does not need to engage in hypotheticals. He made excellent decisions throughout the COVID nonsense. He has a track record of doing the right things and not bending to pressure. I am grateful for Trump in a lot of areas, but he ignored his instincts and bowed to people that have been proven wrong. That was a mistake we were all subjected to. And even more disappointing is that he will and can never admit he blew it during COVID. That's it. That's my view. That's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. I'm going to get out of here now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.